Hi there, we're the Illini Robotics Alumni Association and we're here to show you how to make bumpers. To start off, the materials you'll need. The rules call for 3 quarter inch plywood. This is also sometimes labeled as 23 30 second inch plywood. Get a sheet with the most plies you can. You can find 11 ply at most home improvement stores. Four foot by four foot sheet should be enough to make all of your bumpers. And if you go to Lowe's or Home Depot, they can usually cut your plywood for you, either for free or for a small fee. If your local store doesn't have the ability to cut the plywood for you, you can do it yourself, ideally with a table saw. But if you have to, you could use a circular saw or as a last resort, a jigsaw. Cut the plywood into five inch strips. Make sure you have at least eight. If you get it cut in store, you can either cut the pieces to length there if you already know the correct size, or you can take it home and cut it if you don't know the drive chain dimensions yet. If you're using the kit bot in the long configuration, you'll need four pieces 28 and a half inches long and four pieces 32 and a quarter inches long. For the noodles, you'll need at least six five foot pool noodles or four six foot pool noodles. Make sure they're two and a half inches in diameter. You're allowed to use hex, pedal, or round noodles and either hollow or solid. When shopping around, if you can find solid pool noodles, you'll have a much better finished product. The shape doesn't matter too much, but hex is probably slightly better than round and pedal is probably slightly worse. But again, finding any solid noodles will make a much bigger difference than the shape. We will link a supplier in the description, but you may be able to find them cheaper at a local pool and spa supply store. Remember that per rule R25, the pool noodles need to not just cover the plywood, but also fill in the corner gaps as shown in figure 9-7 in the rules. This means you need to cut eight pieces that are one and a half inches longer than the plywood, and eight pieces that are six and a half inches longer than the plywood. For the kit bot in the long orientation, that works out to eight pieces 35 inches long and eight pieces 33 and three quarter inch long. The longer pieces will actually go with the shorter plywood for the front and back bumpers in this case once you get to assembly. For the fabric, the most commonly used fabric is 1000D Cordura. I looked around at some local fabric supply stores and couldn't find anywhere that carried it, so you'll probably need to order it online. If you're a rookie team, make sure to take advantage of the free bumper fabric from robopromo.com using your code in the virtual kit of parts. You will need four strips of each color cut to 15.5 inches wide. For the length, again remember rule R25 and figure 9-7. So two strips of each color need to be cut 12 inches longer than the plywood, and two strips of each color need to be cut around 24 inches longer than the plywood. For the kit bot in the long configuration, that works out to about 54 inches and 44 inches. Again, the longer fabric actually goes with the shorter piece of plywood and we can always trim extra fabric at the end. For the numbers, if you have someone on the team who is adept with a sewing machine, sew on numbers usually look best. Iron on numbers usually look pretty good too as long as you follow the instructions. Vinyl stick on works if you can't get iron on numbers, but make sure not to get any corners folded over and to follow the instructions to make them look as clean as possible. Make sure you put the numbers on before assembling the bumper. The only other things you'll need are some gaffers tape or duct tape, staples, optionally one inch aluminum angle stock and three quarter inch wood screws, and mounting hardware. We had difficulty getting the bumper mounting hardware included with the kit bot to line up with the chassis, so we used some steel angle stock with quick release pins instead. The first step for assembly is taping the pool noodles to the plywood. Make sure you get the right pieces of noodle with the right length of plywood and center the noodles as best you can. Tape the noodles to the plywood as tightly as you can to provide some tension and make sure they don't move around. Next, lay your fabric down with the shiny side up and center the bumper on the fabric. Keeping them aligned, slide the bumper to the edge of the table so you can start clamping. Squeeze the noodles pretty tight, but don't go so far that the wood starts cracking. Working with a second person, pull the fabric as tight as possible and staple to hold it in place. Move the clamps as necessary, but make sure not to take off more than one clamp at a time until the whole side is stapled.
mount your bumper hardware. If you're using the steel angle stock, cut pieces at least an inch long that will fit on your chassis. Line the stock up with the Andy Mark brackets and mark the hole location. If you're using the quick release pins, drill a quarter inch hole. Otherwise, drill a hole appropriately sized for whatever bolt or other hardware you are using. Put the bracket in place on the robot, hold the bumper in place, making sure not to exceed 7 inches above the floor, and mark to drill a pilot hole in the plywood. Optionally, you can add some angle stop to your bumpers to help hold them in place. If you're going to have an over the bumper intake, you either need to countersink the top screws until they are flush or leave the top screws for the bumper that goes on the side of your intake off completely. At this point, you can release the clamps and rotate the bumper 180 degrees. Repeat the clamping and stapling process, again pulling the fabric as tight as possible. Once the top and bottom are done, you can wrap the ends. Fold them in similar to wrapping a present and again pull as tight as possible before stapling. You can also add a piece on the bottom with the angle sticking out to help hold it in place when mounted on the robot. We didn't film attaching the mounts, but all you need to do is put the bracket in place on the chassis, hold the bumper at the correct height, and mark to drill a pilot hole. Make sure not to exceed 7 inches high with your bumpers.